expectations run in all sorts of ways in our life. So the simple things such as when I turn on the tap, the water will run. And if I turn it to hot, it will be hot. And if I flip it over, it will be cold. Also, you know, I have a reasonable expectation when I flip on the switch, when I come in the door at night and I touch the light, that's it. I have light. I have power. We have all sorts of expectations in our life. We expect our partners to have fidelity for us, to love us, to take, help take care of us. And we acknowledge and, and recognize the expectation back. So I have, we had a surprise on November 4th here in Victoria. We had a windstorm. We often get windstorms here as the winds rip in down the uh, Gulf of Georgia, down the Gulf, Georgia Strait, and over Victoria and Vancouver Island, we get these tremendous winds. And every now and then, there's a really strong one. And we had one on November 4th, as I was saying. And we were sitting here in the afternoon at home, and my wife was working from home, and I was working on my computer, and the power went out. It just stopped. Couldn't believe it. But when we looked out the window, we figured very quickly that trees are blown down and that the power lines have been broken. So we phoned my brother-in-law, who lives not too far away, to check and see if he had power outage. And he said, no, we don't have any power outage here, and if you want to come over for anything, just let us know. I thanked him, and then we sort of decided that we would have some fun, as it was dark and different, and uh, so we got out candles. Uh, we made ourselves a picnic from the things inside the refrigerator, you know, cheese, crackers, pickles, the usual kind of things. And we had one of those logs and we put it on the fire and we sort of camped out in front of our fire. And it was very cozy and it was kind of romantic and it was just the kind of thing to um, sort of cuddle up and be with each other. It was wonderful. It was a lovely few hours of peace and quiet, no interruptions with the phone or television, we talked, and we talked, <laughs> and just before we were going to bed late at night, the power came back on. Now, that's not unusual for us for it to be out six, seven hours when there has been a strong wind, and occasionally we've even gone to bed with the power down and cuddled up and got warm. But then the next morning, I was checking my newspapers, and one of my habits is I'm a bit of a news hound. I will look at the, the various online papers I have. I've given up having them ordered as paper because, well, that's a bit of a waste. At least a digital paper uses some energy, but not as much as making a paper newspaper. And the headlines that day in The Guardian was about the Ukraine and the devastation that Russia was raining down on Ukraine. And there was one article about everyday life in the Ukraine. And normally, it sort of has been going on long enough that it's become a little bit of white noise for me, but this particular day, it caught me. They have no expectation of running water. They have no expectation of their banks being open on time. They have no expectation of buses or emergency services, or that they're going to be even wake up in the morning. I thought about the devastation of what that would be like in my life, and realized that it was just for me an expectation that all of those things would happen. I'd wake up tomorrow, the emergency room is open, 
the power works, banks are open, and I can always use my electronic card or cash. I can buy milk, you know, the basics. And I can actually buy much more than the basics. But I started to think about what life is like in the Ukraine. And this lady had not had running water for weeks, and it was starting to get cold. And fortunately, she had a friend who would share baking with her, but her refrigerator didn't work because she doesn't have power. She was back to the basics. She was almost like living on an old rural farm where you pulled the lever to get the well to bake bread. You put wood in the stove and you fired it up and you rolled your flour and you don't, and you made bread. I mean, I don't know how to do those things. I have grown up in such luxury in the <laughs> and we consider them to be just basics, but in comparison to this dear lady, it was luxury. I could walk out of my door and go for a walk in the park and not expect to be shelled or shot at by a Russian or an incoming missile blow up my home and destroy my life. And I felt great empathy for her and great understanding, but it actually took the denial of something I take for granted to wake me up, to actually cause me to go, oh my God, look at what this massive country Russia is doing to the Ukraine. What barbaric, barbaric things that they are doing. Shelling, strafing, bombing. Now, I'm a child of the Second World War meaning I was conceived while the war was on and born just at the end of it in Europe, in Plymouth. And I remember growing up, because my father was from London, we moved to London, and I remember the devastation that was around me as a three-year-old, a four-year-old, and five. There were bomb sites and buildings that were condemned now, as a kid, we thought that was great. We would go in them and explore, and I got in trouble there, you know. <laughs> but I thought about modern-day Ukraine, and my heart broke. My empathy for this lady, my sympathy for this lady, just made it difficult to recognize what a luxury we have not being involved in a war. The Ukraine was attacked. It wasn't an act of aggression on someone. They were attacked. And a war of aggression was decided against them by Putin. And I started to think about Putin. I mean, what kind of man is he? What kind of soul does he have? Is, is he full of hate? Is he full of righteousness? Why the hell is he doing this? You know? Expectations. Putin expected to run over the Ukraine without any support like he did when he took Crimea from the Ukraine uh, years ago. I mean, expectations. He didn't expect the people of Ukraine to rise up and fight him. And he certainly didn't expect the people of Europe and the nations of Europe to suddenly start supporting Ukraine with weapons, with food, with supplies, with medical supplies. All kinds of support pours into the Ukraine. It suddenly made me think that we have expectations all the time. Things that we take for granted in our lives don't exist there. Take a moment to think about the things you expect. You don't think about them. They're just supposed to happen that way. If you went to the grocery store and the sh store was empty, maybe a can or two of food, you'd be pretty upset. You'd say, why? What's happened? 
And then if somebody said to you, well, we're at war, you would certainly be changed. I know that my parents, having participated in the war, in the Second World War, were certainly changed by it. Many people were damaged. And I wonder and I worry about the Ukraine, the children and the parents. Somebody who survived a war ends up being emotionally damaged in some way or another, emotionally fraught. And then they have children who don't have resources, who don't have schools, who haven't had schools. And they try and do the best that they can, as all parents do. So this has prompted me to send money to the Ukraine, as I can afford it, you know, send and support. And I challenge you to do the same, send what you can to support the Ukraine. But be respectful of your own life, and of the people who are in your life, and your expectations of them, and your expectations of the people that give you service, that you don't notice. Do you expect the bank clerk to understand you? Or do you expect the doctor to know what's going on for you? Do you expect your partner to read your every whim? If there's anything is, it's taught me again to check my expectations at the door. That's a way of saying to live without expectations. It's a difficult thing to do, to live without expectation. We're so used to everything just working for us that we forget. We forget about other people's feelings, other people's circumstances, the way that the world works. Now, one of the things that in our house is there's a particular German chocolate that turns up in one of our local stores just in time for Christmas. But it's a wonderful German almond candy chocolate. And uh, even though I'm a little allergic to almonds, I still love them. But they sell out so quickly. When I was in the store last and I picked up the last package, I heard a woman say to the store clerk, when will you get more? I expect to get some before Christmas. Will you have more in? And she was quite insistent that there be more of these chocolates. It just tweaked me again about the Ukraine, where they're not expecting chocolate for Christmas. They're wondering if they will be alive for Christmas. Imagine if you had that sense yourself as you walk around the world, that will you be alive tomorrow? Would you notice the plants and the trees and the color of the wonderful leaves and all of the things that are around the world around you? What if you didn't expect your partner to do things and you did them as a gift or as an expression of your love for them. What if you didn't expect a clerk or a person to help you the way, and you said thank you? Expectations are kind of a weird thing that we carry around with us, that in our minds we don't, then we're not even conscious of them. And the only reason I became conscious of them is because, you know, it hit my mind reading the article about this older lady in her late 70s on her own, without any power, without any running water, and her friend helping feed her with homemade bread, and she living on a few potatoes with her fire being wood. Ah. Oh. I live in luxury. Do you live in luxury? If you have the right to vote, if you have a free and clear country, if you are not at war, if your banks work, 
if your police force is there and the hospitals there and the doctors are there you live in luxury most of us in the western world and particularly in the industrial countries in the northern hemisphere we live in luxury there are many countries in the world perhaps not at war but don't have the expectation of running water or electric power or food every day we don't think about it. Even in our society, there are a few people who are unhomed, as they say, or unhoused. Let's tell the truth. Living on the street in abject poverty. What are we going to do about that? Are we just going to leave them there? Everything I've read and every experience I've had, I know that abject poverty creates crime creates drug abuse. I used to work in a part of Vancouver as a volunteer at a drug rehab center. Almost all of those people did not have an expected income, did not have an expected future. They just were struggling to get their next drug hit, whatever it was. And it, I had forgotten. I'd forgotten that the world doesn't live like I do, like we do in North America. That many of the people in the world live differently. Wow, this has really got me excited. <laughs> I took a wonderful course many years ago on my 40th birthday to help me try and understand my life. I had lost my way. I wasn't in drug trouble or money trouble, but my relationships were in trouble and I wanted to do better. And I went and took this course called The Pursuit of Excellence. And I remember the session where the facilitator talked about expectations in relationships and how expectations get relationships in trouble. I've never forgotten it. I was actually so impressed by this course that I ended up spending two years studying so that I could become a facilitator of the pursuit of excellence. And what I learned there and what I learned in becoming a therapist has stead me in, you know, it, it, it saved me in many situations. So I have a deeper understanding, I hope, of other people. But even I've gotten lazy. I've expected the light to be turned on when I flick the switch for years, not thought about it. But the combination of the windstorm and not having any power and sitting down, not distracted and having a conversation with my wife, and the next day reading the story of this old lady in the Ukraine with no water, no power, and even wondering if she was going to wake up the next day. Expectations. Be careful. Check your expectations at the door. Make a list of the expectations you have of your partners, of your business, of the people that work for you, or the person that you work for. What are all these expectations, all of these little tentacles that get into everything, get everywhere? Take a look at them. Some of them is built into our society. If you agree to work for a company that pays $15 an hour, you go to work for them. You get paid $15 an hour. You might not get that because the government will take their piece, but that's a different matter because we expect the government to make sure other things work for us. We, in fact, pay them to do that. So expectations... It's all the emotional attachments with expectations that can get us into trouble. Now, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please share it. Please pass it on. Peace and love, Jeffrey.